Okay, today doing rear drum brakes on a 2005 Toyota Corolla. Wheel off, car's up on jack stand, parking brake is off, and hopefully I'll get the rotor comes right off. So that rotor is toast, I'm replacing that. Spray this off with some brake cleaner. power on the spray, oh well. I just want to get all the brake dust off so it's not floating around in my face. I'm going to let that dry a bit and then we'll come back. Actually, I'm going to screw that. I'm just going to start removing. <laughs> So actually, I just put a piece of carpet down here, and as I pull the brake springs and brake parts off one at a time, I'm just going to lay them out in the same order on the carpet. So I remember, I mean, there's in this one, there's three brake springs, a front and a rear one at the top, there's one at the bottom. Uh, the ends are different, the spring ends are different, you don't want to get them swapped around. So to keep everything in order, just pull them off one at a time, put them down on the carpet, and you'll be good. I'm going to wait for this to, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait for it to dry, and then I'll start up again. Back in a second. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is loosen off the, uh, the pad adjuster. So I'm just going to, there's a little arm here. This is the arm that holds the adjuster. That's the little screw wheel. You hear it clicking against the arm. And you have to pull that out in order to adjust it back so that this arm winds in and the pads aren't as far apart and you're not pulling as hard on the springs. So I'm just going to, I'm using pliers here, but you can use another screwdriver. And then use this screwdriver to wind the arm back in. So this one's a little stiff because it's obviously, I think this is the same age as the car. I don't think these brakes have ever been done. So it's going to take a few minutes to wind that winder in. So you can see it there. The little toothed wheel that's getting wound, I'm winding that. The wheel I'm having to push down to screw it in. And that's the little arm that you just pull away from the tooth wheel or else it'll keep it from, keeps the tooth wheel from moving. So pop that out, wind it all back in, and I'll be back in a second once that's all wound in. Okay, so now it's time to remove the brake springs and the spring retainers for the shoes. Always best to take the springs off themselves so it keeps the shoes in position or else it's a pain in the butt to, because uh, the shoes will be moving all around. Um, except for the rear spring, we'll have to take these shoes off in order to get to that one. So I'm just using an old flat headed screwdriver, pop that front brake spring off. And we're going to set that down like that so we know where it came from. I'm going to push this piston back in because as it goes from side to side, you might get some leakage from the cylinder. Next, we're going to remove, it fell off on its own, the automatic adjuster for the rear brakes. It spreads the pads. That's the little adjuster arm. It contacts the little toothed wheel. So we're going to put that in that direction. Now we can pull the bottom spring off. And remember the holes that they came out of. There's more holes in the pads in the uh, shoes. So remember which holes they came out of. Oh, that bottom one's hope I'm not getting in your way. That bottom one is tough to get behind. Okay, so I'm going to take off these spring, the pad, or sorry, the shoe retainers. Just a pair of pliers, grab around the little metal circle, push in and turn. And that will release the little pin. 
it's slotted. It has a slot in there, so it goes in over top of the pin and then turns to lock. There's a little spring. You can pull the pin out if you want. That's what the pin looks like. And it goes through the little slotted hole like that and turns to lock in place. Same on this side. So I'm pushing and turning. You don't have to pull these little pins out. I'm just pulling them out to make sure they're okay. So now I can pull the bottom of the shoes out. So that the spring is easier to grab and remove. And it goes that way with the two hooks facing inward. So I'm putting that down on my carpet to make sure I remember where that goes. On the top. Unhook from the little arms on the wheel cylinder. So you're not putting a lot of pressure on those. And we're gonna try and get this little pad separator out. Pad spacer. Other side might be better. And, well, it just all popped off. That's nice. Okay, pad separator that screws in and out. You're gonna be pulling this apart and greasing it to make sure that it's moving everywhere. Nicely lubed. Ugh. Front pad, rear pad, spring. So the rear brake spring goes this way. And then we've got to deal with the parking brake shoe. There should be a little clip on this side, which there is on the back side. I'm going to use a screwdriver to get in between. It's like a little horseshoe that's been squeezed together. So separate it and then pop it off. These are always your old nasty screwdrivers you use on brakes because they get pretty, you're kind of using them for levers and stuff. The horseshoe pops off. Remember it goes like this with the spring on the inside. This is the parking brake cable here. And this will pop off. So grab the new shoes and be back in a second. Okay, so I cleaned up inside the backing shield to make sure there's no crap in there. Make sure the cylinder's not leaking, pushing back and forth, back and forth. There should be no drips coming out. If you've, when you pulled your springs off or your pads, uh, your shoes off, if you've pushed one of these too far in because they go in and out at the same time, but they're separately, it's just fluid in there keeping them going back and forth. The fluid kind of connects them, but if you push one too far, you will pop a little piston out of its seal and it will leak but that doesn't mean that the actual seal is leaking so i'm just testing it making sure it moves properly and you're going to get two pads they're going to be different there's going to be the whole difference is this little pin on the front and back that's for the rear one it hooks up to the parking brake shoe i'm going to slip it over the rear and now that we're handling the new pads i put new gloves on so i'm not getting oil on the the new pads. Now, where did that go? Over? There we go. Your new pad should come with a new horseshoe clip to hold the 
parking brake assembly on. Simply slips over. Hopefully I'm keeping that in camera. Then grab the pliers and pinch the two ends in to hold it. We're gonna rotate that up. Take the rear brake spring. helicopter going by I pulled the springs out and took them in the garage to clean them and this is the little pad adjuster and spreader we're gonna unscrew that this part just pops on and off and we're gonna be lubing that so it doesn't get seized and you can use brake grease there's I, if you have silicone best to use silicone brake grease I'm using a silicone based anti-seize Screw it all the way back in. And make sure it's not tight anywhere because it's going to move really, really freely. Pop the top. Tight little bit of loop on that. Anti seize again. And that goes with this second. There's, there's two little spaces. The second one fits outward. Kind of like mechanical yoga. <laughs> kind of bending in every position to try and get them on. I'm sure when they build them in the factory, there's an absolute perfect way of doing them. In two seconds every time. So now I have to get this spring into that front hole without everything falling apart on me. Which that did. Now hopefully whole thing down past the cylinder wheel cylinder and I don't think I can the toothed wheel is not gonna go past it and I don't want to force it past the boot crap oh, maybe I can... yes there we go so now these tops of the pad of the shoes go into the little slots wheel cylinder up there. Okay. You see how that's centered in there? And you've got the one little opening still left here on the front, and that is for this to slide into, the little pad adjuster. And that's going to slide up. The little open part goes over top of the pin. And then the little hole is for the spring to go through, and the spring pulls tension from there to the other side. So I'm going to put the camera down and pop that spring in. If you've got a spring that's got a hook and then a backwards hook like this, this is the end you put in first because you're not going to be able to get this in second after this one's hooked on so this one and always goes in first it goes in the same hole that the other spring is popping out of and we're going to if we're lucky using an old screwdriver a skinny one stick the spring in the arm of the, the shaft of the screwdriver and then leverage it into the hole again if we're lucky <laughs>
Come on, baby. You can do it. <laughs> I'll repeat again, this is the way it's going to go for you when you're doing it at home. It's not Haynes manual, remove spring. It is, this is how this, what a bitch, these springs are to pull on and off, and they're not always easy. So I'm gonna try grabbing and pulling with a pair of pliers. Make sure these wheel cylinder pins are still in, not with the pads. And, oh, I will do the bottom spring first. Take the bottom spring while it's, the, the spreader separator out here is not, uh, that's where the pads rest in on the back of that separator. So you're gonna hook up the spring first. One side in, pull against the spring, pop the other side in. Now we're going to take our shoe retainer pins, pops through the hole, spring. You can usually do this by hand. If you can't, you can use your pliers. Line it up with the little pin, push it over, and turn. <laughs> My glove's not going to make it. can't do it by hand. Grab the pliers, push it in, and turn. Oops. And holding the pin on the back. Yeah. There we go. Locked on. So I'll do the other one, and I uh, won't make you watch the second one, because it's the exact same as the first one. I'll clean this all up and get ready to reinstall the drum. Back in a second. Okay, so now that the second spring is on, and you make sure that they're completely at, uh, completely like across, the, the, they're, they're 90 degrees from the slit that goes in, so you put it in the slot and turn it 90 degrees so it's completely locked into there. As you can see that pin, you see the slot. Okay, and so now we left, only thing left to do is adjust the pad separation because if we put the the rotor on right now these pads are going to be too far from the uh, the rotor surface and what you want to do is take a screwdriver there's a little access port on the back there's a rubber plug you can pop off and get to from the back from the front is much much easier while well, you've got the brakes off you're doing this anyway and you're just going to gently you don't want to wreck these teeth so gently leverage it up And that's going to unscrew it and as it unscrews it's going to push the pads apart and that little see the little arm on the bottom locks it in place so it can't go back down which is why when we were pulling it off and, and making it uh, bring it in we had to lever the leverage leverage the lever <laughs> away so you're gonna bring this out about a centimeter to start with Take the new drum, put it on, spin it in place, push on the brake pedal. Uh, that will center the pads. When you push on the brake pedal, pump it a couple of times, it'll center the pads. And then you feel how much uh, play is in the rotor. And basically you want to pull it on and off a couple of times as you continue to do this until it's the rotor, you can feel the tiniest, a little amount of drag when you turn the rotor with the, the pads barely, barely, barely touching the rotor as you turn it. And uh, that'll be good. And then you put the rotor on, put your wheel back on, and you are done. So again, this I'm just going to do this adjustment. I'm going to put the rotor on, push the brake paddle to center these pads. When you push on it, it's going to push these two little pistons out, and it will center the pads against the rotor. And I'll be able to feel as it moves back and forth that it's still sloppy and loose. Easily pull it off, adjust the little notches a little more so it comes out, out, out further. If if you can't get the um, uh, the rotor on, that means or the the drum on, that means that you've uh, brought it out too far and you'll have to crank the little wheel back in a little bit. 
but uh, basically you want it so that it's, the, it's just these pads are just touching. When you put it on, you can feel a slight, 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 like I mean very slight touching against the, the, uh, the drum. But they auto adjust as you hit the parking brake. When you pull the parking brake, this automatically adjusts this. So you can actually, as you're parking and backing up and everything, uh, hitting the parking brake, then it will automatically adjust. But the first, obviously, it'll take a few tries to do that. So you don't want to be driving with just the front brakes. So adjust this so that the pads touch the, just touch the drum. I'm repeating myself. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching.